And everyone who labors, come to the water. All you who have no money, come to the feast. For this is Lord, the waters of the Jordan. For this is Lord, the waters of your birth. For this is life, the waters that renew you. Oh, come to the feast. Oh, come to the feast. Oh, everyone who seeks, come to the waters. Hear me and share your riches. Come to the feast. For this is life, the streams of for this is life, the rains that bring you joy. For this is life, the waters that restore you. Oh, come to the feast. Oh, come to the feast. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May God bring us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, the sins of the world have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with 
the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who is the abasement, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have re rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he. Meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished. And he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your name, King and my God. I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will praise your name, my King and my God, I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will give you glory, God above, and I will bless your name forever. Every day I will bless and praise your name forever. I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will praise your name, my King and my God. The Lord is full of grace and mercy, who is kind and slow to anger. God is good in every way and full of compassion. I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will praise your name, 
my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O God, and let all the faithful bless you. Let them speak of your might, O oh Lord, the glory of your kingdom. I will praise your name, my King and my God. I will praise your name, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. If the Spirit of the One who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh and live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have given to the little ones the mysteries of your kingdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord, though you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father Accept the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
I'm going to begin with some words from St. Ambrose of Milan. No one heals himself by wounding another. Mirroring these words is a simple allegory about three men who set out on a journey. Each carried two sacks around his neck, one in front and one in back. The first man was asked what was in his bags. In this one on my back, he said, I carry all the kind deeds of my friends. They are out of sight and out of mind, and I don't have to do anything about them. They're soon forgotten. This sack in the front carries all the unkind things that people do to me. I pause in my journey every day to take them out and air them, lest I forget them. It, shows, it slows me down, but nobody gets away with anything. The second man was asked what was in his sacks. In this one on my back, I keep all my bad deeds. I keep them behind me, out of my view. This sack in front carries my good deeds. I constantly keep them before me. I pause in my journey every day to take them out and air them, lest I forget them. It slows me down, but I take great pleasure in them. The third man was asked what was in his sacks. I carry my friend's kind deeds in the front sack. He said, it looks full, but it is not heavy. Far from slowing me down, it is like the sails of a ship. It helps me move ahead. The sack on my back has a hole in the bottom. That's where I put all the evil I hear from others. It falls out and is lost. So I have no burden to impede me. Those who view themselves as the wise in the understanding of this world, that is, those who rely on their own judgment and abilities, cannot accept the revelation which Christ has given us today. Supernatural outlook is always connected with humility. A humble person who gives himself little importance sees where the person who is full of self-esteem fails to perceive supernatural things. In this same passage, Jesus also formally reveals himself and reveals his divinity. Our knowledge of a person shows our intimacy with him. According to the principle given by St. Paul, for what person knows a man's thoughts except the spirit of the man which is in him? 1 Corinthians 2, 11. The son knows the father by the same knowledge as that by which the father knows the son. This identity of knowledge implies oneness in nature. That is to say, Jesus is God just as the father is God. Jesus calls all of us to come to him. We all find things difficult in one way or another in our daily lives. The history of souls bears out the truth of these words of Jesus. Only the gospel can fully satisfy the thirst for truth and justice that sincere people feel. Only our Lord Jesus and those to whom he passes on his power can soothe the sinner by telling him or her, your sins are forgiven. In this connection, Pope Paul VI teaches, Jesus says now and always, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His attitude towards us is one of invitation, knowledge, and compassion. Indeed, it is one of offering, promise, friendship, goodness, remedy of our ailments, he is our comforter, indeed, our nourishment, our bread, giving us energy and life. This is from Paul VI homily on Corpus Christi in 1974. Jesus also said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. A yoke is a wooden bar that fits over the shoulder of a pair of animals, usually oxen, and it fastens under their necks to allow them to pull a shared load. In the first century, a carpenter carved out the yoke in a rough form 
and would finish the job by fitting it precisely to the animal who would wear it. A poorly made yoke would chafe and rub, but a well-fitted yoke would ride comfortably on the animal's neck and shoulders. When Jesus says, my yoke is easy, these words might also be translated as, my yoke fits well. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus does hold up a yoke as a kind of trademark, not of his skill as a carpenter, but as a trademark of his ministry. We may not recognize a yoke as a beautiful symbol in an aesthetic sense, but it may be viewed as an honest and virtuous one. Come to me, Jesus says to the crowds who are following him. They are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The Pharisees have weighed them down with an endless series of petty regulations, yet they have brought no peace to their souls. Jesus tells these people and us about the kind of burden he imposes. Any other burden oppresses and crushes us, but Christ's actually takes the weight off of us. Any other burden weighs us down, but Christ is uplifting and frees us. All of us are born to wear a yoke, and we have no say in that matter, except to choose which yoke we will wear. Many people choose poorly. As an example, sin can be a yoke. Sin can become our master. We can become slaves to sin. In Paul's letter to the Romans, the, the apostle says, I am sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. This is the plight of everyone who submits to the heavy yoke of sin. All of us have our own personal laundry lists of sins, unforgiveness, greed, disloyalty, self-centeredness, lying, gossiping, to some to name just a few. No matter which ones of those yokes we try on, we soon find that it chafes and debases us, and it wears us down spiritually to the point where we are ready to cry out with Paul, who will rescue me? Paul then supplies his own answer. He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. For it is Christ alone who sets us free and breaks every oppressive yoke. But Christ does not liberate us so that we may coast irresponsibly through life. He liberates us from the abrasive yoke to fit us for his own custom-made yoke. Jesus' yoke is different from all others. The other yokes are hard. His is easy. The others chafe us where, raw. His fits us perfectly. The others are heavy burden. His burden is light. When we take up that yoke, we are motivated by love. Sin drives us. Christ leads us. For this reason, the word slave is probably not an appropriate way to speak of our relationship to Christ. We do certainly belong to him, but we serve him. We conform our will to his, but we're not slaves. A slave serves out of fear or coercion. We serve Christ out of love and devotion. Obedience is our choice. Love can prompt us to do the hard things, the unpleasant things, and the lowly things. In fact, those jobs that no one else could ever force us to do, we will undertake joyfully for the sake of those we love. Those of us that are mothers, I'm not a mother, but those of us that are mothers out there know what that means. And those of us that are children know that our mothers will do absolutely anything for us. That's the love that Christ talks about. That's the love that Christ calls us to. That's the life that, that's the love that Christ leads us. To follow Christ is to be yoked in his service, but love cushions that yoke. The yoke of Christ is in harmony with our nature. The yoke of Christ is in harmony with our purpose in life. Telos, to get to God. 
The yoke of Christ is in harmony with our sincere desire for wholeness of life. Christ's yoke is light and easy, not only because the yoke is tailor-made for us, but also because we are each tailor-made for that yoke. And the yoke of Christ is light because it is not carried alone. A first century yoke was typically, typically made for two. When we are yoked in the service of Christ, we are also yoked in the grace and strength of Christ. The Lord who commands us to bend our necks to his yoke walks beside us and puts his own shoulder into the task. There are two ways to ease a burden. One is to take away some of the weight. The other is to add to the strength of those of the ones who bears the load. That is the way of Christ. He respects us too much to lower the standards of the kingdom for our convenience. He loves us too much to belittle us. He doesn't always give us small jobs or easy tasks. Sometimes he requires staggering and frightening. But whatever the situation, Christ always provides us with the strength to do it. And having done it, we find ourselves to be stronger than before. When the load is too heavy, Christ joins us in our struggle. When the burden is beyond us, Christ is beside us. If we belong to Christ, the journey is never too hard, never too lonely, because we do not shoulder the yoke alone. The Lord says, my yoke is easy and my burden light. And so, since we began with a quote from a saint, we will end with one from Saint Ephraim the Syrian. Yoke yourself under the law of God, so that you may be, in truth, a free person. Now, St. Ephraim said, man, but I chose to be politically correct and say person. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things invisible. I believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. In perfect trust, let us bring our prayers before the Lord, who is meek and humble of heart. For leaders and ministers within the church, may they look to the humble and lowly for inspiration and understanding as they seek to follow Jesus. We pray to the Lord. For our parish and local community, 
May we work together to lift up the most vulnerable in our midst and to end all forms of oppression. We pray to the Lord. For our country, for the protection of all police and first responders, for fair and just policing that will promote peace and well-being in all our neighborhoods, we pray to the Lord. For those serving in the armed forces, that God's guiding hand protects them from all harm, we pray to the Lord. For the sick, for those suffering from the coronavirus and for the blessed repose of all who have died from this illness, for those remembered on the altar and in our online book of prayers, and for those recalled now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, that they may be raised up to eternal joy in heaven, especially Michelle Perez, Camilo Sarmiento, father of Maria Mendoza, Anna June Gerard, mother of Colleen Phelps, Gerald Perna, and Pedro and Rogelio Monterola. We pray to the Lord. And for all at St. Catherine, uh, and for all of St. Catherine parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who champions the lowly and lifts up all who are bowed down, you sent your Son Jesus to teach us the way of humility. Hear our prayers, that in following Him we may give rest to the weary and build up the kingdom of God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. to me come to me come when you are weary come to me come to me and I will give you Take my yoke upon your shoulders. Take my yoke upon your shoulders. Come and learn from me. Learn from me. For I am gentle of heart. Come to me, come when you are weary, come to me, come to me, and I will give you rest. For the heart I hold is humble. Yes, the heart I hold is humble, and my yoke is easy, my burden light, and you will find rest for your soul. Come to me, come to me. Oh, when you are weary, come to me, come to me, and I will give you
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your dreams. We praise the Lord in his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to, to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. That the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that, by, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. For as we memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Felipe, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also your brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Remember, re welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who art in heaven, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. But you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us Behold the living. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As a reminder, our procession for communion will come forward from the back pews first. Please pay attention to the ushers. Thank search me and you know me all my thoughts lie open to your gaze when i walk or lie down you are before me ever the maker and keeper of my days my resting and my rising you discern my purpose from afar and with love everlasting you beseech me in every moment of life or death you are before a word is on my tongue, Lord. You have known its meaning through and through. You are with me beyond my understanding. God of my presence, my past and future too. Your spirit is upon me still I search for shelter from your light there is nowhere on earth I can escape you even the darkness is radiant in your sight for you created me and shaped me, gave me life within my mother's womb. For the wonder of who I am, I praise you. Safe in your hands, all creation is made new. Oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I walk or lie down, you are before me. Ever the maker and keeper of my days. Is a place for sadness. Hold unto life. There is a season of gladness. Hold on to love. When pain and confusion seem endless, 
Hold on to love. We cultivate healing thickness. Hold on to love. Hold on to love where hope is found. Hold on to love where joy abounds. Hold on to love where grace and mercy overflow. Hold on to love. When terror and fear overwhelm us, hold on to love. Courage and faith will sustain us. Hold on to love. Violence seeks to destroy us. Hold on to love. Acts of compassion restore us. Hold on to love. Hold on to love where hope is found. Hold on to love where joy abounds. Hold on to love where grace and mercy overflow. Hold on to love. When hatred is used to divide us, hold on to love. Wisdom and truth reunite us. Hold on to love. When poisons as freedom, hold on to love. Dignity means all are welcome. Hold on to love. Hold on to love where hope is found. Hold on to love where joy abounds. Hold on to love where grace and mercy overflowing. Hold on to love. Hold on to love where hope is found. Hold on to love where joy abounds. Hold on to love where grace is overflowing. Hold on to love. Hold on to love where hope is found. Hold on to love where joy abounds. Hold on to love when grace and mercy overflow. Hold on to love. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Father Ignatius has an announcement. Uh, good morning. As you may know, this was the first Mass, first Sunday Mass of Father Maurice 
here at St. Catherine's, was just ordained 14 days before. Congratulations, Father. <clears throat> And a hearty welcome to St. Catherine's and wish you for fruitful ministry here. We will have a reception for Father at the gazebo, uh, meet and greet, and wish him uh, we have opportunity to do that immediately after this Mass. You know, when you, it's a very good thing to welcome new priests, new assignments, but every year around this time, I have to make announcement which I don't like, which you will not also like. This is the third year in a row I am making similar announcement. Once again, I regret to inform you that I received an email message from the diocese notifying me that Bishop Esteves has appointed Father Bob Hoffman as parochial vicar of Epiphany Parish in Lake City, effective August 1st. Uh, it seems his help is needed in that parish now, but I share your great disappointment in losing such a wonderful priest who has made a valuable contribution to our parish with his inspirational ministry in such a short period of time. Let us wish him and pray for a good ministry over there. I hope Father Mori stays. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your mind. Thanks be to God. Beautiful for spacious skies, for amber ways of grain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain, America, America. God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea.